it's such a diverse range of vocal arranging, right? So it, it's an album that clearly goes all the way into contemporary classical music, and it goes all the way to street corner doo wop. Uh, I guess so. You know, a lot of that uh, uh, is attributable, I guess, to "Bat Out of Hell," which uh, Jim Steinman wanted like big choruses on every song. You know, big giant chorus on every single song. So I had to arrange a chorus for every single song. And then as time went on, even when Jim was doing other projects, he would call me in to do vocal arrangements. And me and Chasm and Rory Dodd would go into the studio and sing the highest notes that we could possibly sing. Usually it wasn't very a lot of low notes. It was usually the highest notes you could possibly sing in falsetto. And uh, and that went on for years. So I became like his go-to choir master. And let me tell you, watching Todd Rundgren create background vocals has got to be one of the most thrilling experiences you can ever have in music. I can't even describe it. It's 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 as exciting as if you got to watch. I know this sounds hyperbolic, but if you got to watch Mozart compose or John Lennon compose alone and could be in their head, because you could actually see it visually and hear it being created. He makes it up on the spot. And he'd hand out the parts, and they were astonishing. You know, he didn't do pads like a lot of background vocals or ahs or oohs. He did complex melodies that intertwined counterpoints. And he'd hand them out, and everyone was terrified to admit they, couldn't, they didn't have a clue what to do. He would just, and I think he did it partly for perverse fun. He'd go, all right, now this is what you sing. Ah, 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 you. Then you go to the diminished, then you come up here, you do an augmented, then I want you to, he'd go on for like two minutes, and say, that's your part, now remember that. Now you do it, and they go, what, what? And they never remember it, but it was astonishing to watch him do that. One, one, of, um, one of Todd's incredible talents is the ability to hear background vocals um, not on, not not just in in terms of uh, of what is what works for a song, but um, the the actual parts themselves. I, I mean, for someone uh, like myself who doesn't read or write music, um, Todd has an uncanny ability to say uh, just out of the clear blue. Okay, here's the first part, and then he'll sing da 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 da, da whatever it is, and then and and then the, here's the next part da, 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 and and then here's the third part. So okay, Chasm, you sing this part. Willie, you sing that part. Roger, you sing that part. And it's just like out of the clear blue. Everything I know about background vocal arranging and background vocals, I learned from Todd. A lot of it is just it sort of followed me, you know. It's, uh, the reputation for being able to do this kind of thing. This is why I've been peripherally involved in Kanye's record, is to add vocals like that to it. So uh, I don't know if any of them will see the light of day. I'm told that they will, but it's like, it's that reputation is why I'm involved in, in a contemporary project as well. That's fantastic. I'm really excited that something possibly could happen with that. Could you share anything about what you did for that record? Uh, I can't, as a matter of fact, not because. Yeah, I wasn't sure. No, not because, not because of any restriction or anything like that. It's because I don't know. There could be twenty producers involved at this point. I keep hearing from like guys I never heard from before saying, "Have you got this track from last summer? Because we can't find it anymore." You know, <laughs> or you know, and. And it happens like once every two weeks, a new guy, a different guy will contact me about the project. A different guy that I had never worked with before. They'd say, hey, do you want to sing on this song? Then suddenly nobody else seems to know anything about it. It's just chaos, total chaos all the time. So can you talk a little about uh, the song Hoja? I think it's, it's such a standout song. And... Um did mention that I want to get to this full house thing, which to me is like the weirdest. Do you recall it, Todd? What's that? Full house? The TV show? Yeah. Let me show you. I want to do that dance to I forget about it. So get up out of your bed one more time. Oh, yeah. Me. Now hold your babies in now. Me. So 
how did this happen? What is going on here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, it's funny. It's a, it's a kind of a collision of two worlds uh, in, in terms of the song. The song's about an experience that I had in Turkey uh, when I went around the world by myself. And I met a uh, uh, essentially a guy who was the head of the Mevlevi sect of Sufis in a town called Konya, in the middle of Turkey. And he taught they taught me how to do the dervish dance, amongst other things. You know, I spent a lot of time with him. He taught me how to do the dervish dance, and uh, it's nothing like when like the uh, thing that they do for tourists where they get all dressed up with the tall hats and they spin around, you know, it's, it's a intensely uh, spiritual kind of thing that they do. And it goes on for a long time. Uh, but then matching that up with that kind of, you know, um, Lambert Kendricks and Ross sort of thing, you know, the, uh, the jazz vocal thing would almost be a, uh, sacrilegious probably to them so they i'm pretty sure the guys in turkey have never heard it um but it's funny i wound up doing a lot of uh judging of acapella competitions after the record came out and a surprising number of uh of uh of units would be taking stuff off of the record because there was so little new acapella music being made so you are aware of a legacy forming of this music to this day, right? I mean, there are kids performing these songs now, aren't they? Uh, I think so, that some of them have become sort of acapella classics because of the challenges that they represent and the fact that they're, it's not, you know, down by the old mill stream, <laughs> you know. Show me how to spin now, Hoja. Please 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 show me how Uh, uh, all that sort of, you know, typical barbershop stuff. Um, yeah, acapella music uh, was n never a specific influence for me. You know, it was always usually with some other accompaniment. And that's probably because there isn't a whole lot of it. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of records. What was it? Take Six? Was that a band? Take Six. Take Six was a, a something of an inspiration as well. You know, the things that they would do with vocals. And I think that that would have been a song that may have been a, an homage to Take Six. So is this, um, is this in alignment with your Bossa Nova period where it was like... It was late last night I was feeling something wasn't right you were into bossa novas, performing your songs as bossa novas. Is, is this an a cappella, you know, period or something? Well, the bossa nova thing was was just an opportunity. I wasn't dying to do a bossa nova record, but I was approached by Angel Records. I don't think they exist anymore, but they were still being distributed by Capital, and they were doing a bunch of uh, re-recordings with various artists. And most artists would just do acoustic versions of their old hits. But I think they had a pretty successful album with like James Taylor. And so James Taylor just did him and guitar, re-recorded a lot of his old popular hits. So they approached me, you know, and I said, well, you know, I'm really into this bossa nova thing around now because I moved to Hawaii and now I'm into exotica music and, and that sort of thing. And so I'd like to do a bossa nova record. And that's what we did. Um, he just has a, 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 an incredible talent and a brilliance for um, for being able to pick out notes 
uh, in in terms of uh, triads and chords and uh, and what works uh, it, it, with w what works in a three or four part harmony. So that carried over. Uh, it, it, you know, Todd's such a a, a brilliant singer um, that it made perfect sense that he would do uh, an album of all vocals. And so. Um, so yeah, so it just it, it, it was just something that uh, that he you know like never never does the same thing twice and and uh, it was time for him to do an album of nothing but vocals, no instruments, uh, everything all any instrument you hear on that record is done by him singing it. Um, so it was it, it was quite an interesting project to be involved in.